Come and hear our story. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Rick, uh, and I'm the pastor here. Pastor means shepherd. Uh, basically, I'm here to look after people. And I have given my whole life, my whole life, to tell this story. I can tell it in many different ways and there's many different facets to it. But tonight, if you might just give me a couple of minutes, I want to tell you about my Christmas story. Christmas means a lot, doesn't it, to a lot of different people. To some of us, it's about donning our best Christmas jumpers or worst Christmas jumpers. In my case, it's the best one I could find at the last minute. Wave your hands if you're wearing a Christmas jumper. To some of us, we have... Get this, I bought a prop. To some of us, we might have silly family traditions. They might be great. When I was a little boy, my mum had this tradition where she would buy me a dressing gown. Do you know what you wear when you've got your pajamas on? And in Alicia's family, they have this tradition where they open one present the night before Christmas. So not wanting to embarrass her, do you know how pleased I was today when I got to open my one present? And it was a good looking soft dressing gown. <laughs> now, this dressing gown serves two purposes. It's nice and soft and cosy and it helps me tell the story. And you will be very, very pleased to know that I am already very hot. So it should keep the story nice and short. But I need to start a long way back. Now, none of you will be surprised that today we're here. We are flesh and blood and matter. Touch the chair, touch the floor, look at the ceiling, look at your friend next to you. We are here. And I believe that in the beginning, way before any one of us can imagine, God created the heavens and the earth. And to begin with, it was good. The problem is you don't have to look much further than your neighbour to realise something has gone horribly wrong, hasn't it? The world we live in today is full of brokenness and injustice and pain and suffering and addiction. Well, the story I have for you is a way that that good God who created the heavens and the earth and it was good has found a way for us to be reconciled to him. Now, I don't want to get too gory. This is the second swing at the axe. Because the first time he said, well, maybe, just maybe, if we, if we create some rules for people to follow so that they might not have this thing called sin that separates us from God, well, maybe, just maybe, we could be reconciled together and it can all be good again. Well, it didn't work. How many of us are going to set New Year's resolutions this year? And how many of us are going to get to end of January the 1st? At best, January the 2nd. I don't think I've ever made it to January the 3rd. So no matter how good we try to be, we always continue to fail. Well, instead, God came up with this other plan. He said, I'm going to need to create a human who is perfect. A human who doesn't have to even repent or say sorry. A human who will never sin. A human who will never do wrong. And the only being in creation like that is God himself. So he took a bit of himself and he created a son. And don't ask me to explain that, I don't understand the science. But he took a bit of himself and he said, you go as a baby. And today, do you know what? Today does mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And you may hear people tell you about the real origins of Christmas. And the real oranges, uh, origins of December 25th. I'm not going to talk to you about any of those. Talk to them. They feel passionately about those stories. Let them tell you. Today is the day I stop. And remember this one moment in human history. When a little baby was born. And he was going to grow up and have the most amazing life. It was going to be short. But it was going to be perfect. And today is the day, just like I want to remember your birthday, just like I really hope I remember my wife's birthday this year. It's the day I'm going to celebrate the birth of my king. Now I know the rest of the story. I read to the end of the book. I know what happens. 
I know that for him to deal with sin and for us to be reconciled to God, some really awkward stuff needs to happen. And if you want to hear more about that, come and speak to me afterwards. And in fact, from the 18th of January, we're actually going to run a course very here in this church. It's called the Alpha Course. And I, I want you to come if you have any questions. But some stuff happened and this baby grew to be a 33-year-old man. And he went to the cross. And through him, we're able to be reconciled through God. We need to listen to his own words. John 3.16 says this. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that you might live. It says some other stuff too, but so that you might live. John 15, 15 goes to a step I could never understand. I don't call you servants. I call you friend. This little baby Jesus, he grew up and he did some stuff. And now he calls you friend. The Bible tells us that you have to do one thing, one thing to start that relationship. It's if you believe in your heart and confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. So eat your mince pies, wear your new dressing gowns. Please wash your Christmas jumpers if you're going to keep wearing them. Especially after tomorrow when you spill your gravy and your brandy butter on them. But tomorrow morning, tonight, the next day, January the 18th, Sunday morning, every Sunday we're here, 11 a.m. Just remember that this broken world that we live in, full of pain and in suffering and injustice, is not the end of the story. We know what happened at the beginning, we know what we're suffering now, and we know how the story ends. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah means praise God. So thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. If you want to make that step today, come and speak to one of us afterwards. I think it's all left to be said is let's go out singing. And yes, I'm very hot.